Welcome to the webinar series, Custodians of Biodiversity, organized on the occasion of the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples by the UNDP GEF Global ABS Project, the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Equator Initiative, the International Indigenous Forum on Biodiversity, the Network of Indigenous Women for Biodiversity of Latin America, and the Small Grants Program. This webinar, has the option for simultaneous interpretation. Please make sure to select your language uh, preference at the right bottom of your Zoom toolbar. In your meeting uh, webinar controls, click interpretation, click the language that you would like to hear. And if you only want to hear the interpreted language, click mute original audio. This session is being recorded and will be available through the global ABS community the community of practice of the UNDP GEF Global ABS project. During this session, participants' mix will be muted, but will be able to ask questions through the Q&A functionality available at the toolbar located at the bottom of your screen. Participants' questions will be addressed after the panelists' presentations during the Q&A section. To continue the discussions on the topic of this webinar, please visit the Global ABS community and leave your discussion on the forum section. Today's session is on Indigenous Peoples and ABS, Nature-Based Solutions for People and Planet. The webinar will be moderated by Alejandro Lago, manager of the UNDP GEF Global ABS Project, a three-year project that assists 23 countries in the national implementation of the NAOYA protocol. Alejandro, you have the floor. Thank you, Agustina. Welcome to this webinar on indigenous peoples and access to genetic resources and benefit sharing, nature-based solutions for people and planet that will focus on experiences in the Asia Pacific region. This is the third out of four webinars of the series Custodians of Biodiversity, a week dedicated to celebrate the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. Observed on August 9th each year to raise awareness and protect the rights of the world's indigenous population. This series of webinars is organized by the UNDP GEF Global ABS Project, the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, the International Indigenous Forum on Biodiversity, the Network of Women for Biodiversity in Latin America, the Equator Initiative, and the GEF Small Grants Program. My name is Alejandro Lago, and I'm the manager of the Global ABS Project, and I will be facilitating this webinar. The Global ABS Project is funded by the Global Environment Facility and directly implemented by the United Nations Development Program. The main objective of the project is to promote the full implementation of the Nagoya Protocol in 23 countries trying to make legal access to genetic resources and the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits, the rule at the global level, and not the exception. That, of course, also includes access to the traditional knowledge held by indigenous peoples and local communities. Here in this map, you can see in green the countries covered by the Global EBS project. However, there is much more happening at the moment on access and benefit sharing. And in this second map, you can see some countries in green, the ones that belong to the Global EBS project, and some countries in yellow. Those countries in yellow are national ABS uh, projects, uh, funded also by Jeff and implemented by UNDP. And indeed, the three experiences that will be shared today are from national projects taking place in Cook Islands, Vietnam, and Malaysia. I don't want to bother you with all the details of the different components of the Global ABS project, but I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you and to highlight just one of the main uh, components of this project, the Global ABS Community. The Global ABS community is an open community of practice 
on ABS matters, access to genetic resources and benefit sharing. Where all persons involved and interested on this matter can exchange ideas, uh, challenges, and also solutions. I invite you all to join the global ABS community and to exchange your experiences and needs or make technical requests through this platform accessible through our website. For example, are you an indigenous community involved in a negotiation of an ABS agreement and you need support? You can send us your requests through the global, through the ABS legal clinics, and we will try to provide the best possible legal support to equal the negotiation. Are you a researcher or a research institution or a private company trying to identify solid partners that are able to comply with ABS requirements in provider countries? You can contact us through the ABS business facility and we will try to offer you options of ABS reliable partners. We are very proud of the different public awareness campaigns that have been conducted under the project through the global ABS community. Here you have an example of a global campaign conducted to celebrate the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And you can access also the, the video that we prepare for that uh, campaign with very inspiring uh, messages and uh, stories from our researchers all around the world, our women, research women, no? all around the world. Um, we also uh, had a strong campaign uh, to support uh, the celebration of the Indigenous uh, Forum, um, the International Forum on Indigenous uh, Organized, uh, the Permanent Forum, apologies, on Indigenous Issues um, last year on the framework of the International Day of Indigenous Languages. And this year we are conducting another campaign and we invite you to participate um, as part of this super year for biodiversity 2020, the resolutions for people and planet. No? And in that campaign, we would like to hear from you. What are you going to do for biodiversity and ABS in this year 2020 and uh, beyond? Moving on to our topic, so join the, the, the global ABS uh, community, please. You have there the links and also you have um, our emails. Moving on to our topic for this webinar, biological diversity resources are the pillars upon which we build civilizations. Fish provide 20% of animal protein to about 3 billion people around the world. Over 80% of the human diet is provided by plants. As many as 80% of people living in rural areas in developing countries rely on traditional plant-based medicines for basic healthcare. The Nagoya Protocol is an innovative international instrument in regard to indigenous peoples at it recognize their rights over the traditional knowledge associated to genetic resources. And it also establishes the international obligation to obtain their free pre or informed consent and the negotiation of their conditions of access and benefit sharing when accessing their traditional knowledge. To conclude this introduction, nature-based -based solutions for people and planet emphasizes a message of hope solidarity and the importance of working together at all levels to build a future of life in harmony with nature. I believe the three experiences that are going to be shared today are excellent examples of this spirit. Without any further delay, let's start our journey through the Pacific in Vietnam. Let me introduce you Ms. Chao Su Mei, who is a Red Dao. Uh, she is starting following her parents into the forest to pick up the medicine when she was three years old. Nearly 50 years of experience, Ms. Chao has discovered 34 herbal medicines 
out of more than 100 species of valuable medicinal plants discovered by the Red Dao people. In particular, she has developed many effective remedies to treat prenatal and postnatal diseases for women and infants. With her knowledge of medicine and concerns of conserving precious medicine in Sapa, under the support of the University of uh, Pharmacy, in 2006, Ms. Chao persuaded the authorities of Taping Commune to establish a cooperative to exploit their own remedies and reduce poverty for people in the village. In 2007, Sapa Napro Company uh, at the Tai Chai village and Tai Ping Commune and Sa Pa Town uh, within the Lao Kai province was officially established by uh, Lalo, Ms. Uh, Xiao Song as director. She is a consultant of the company, Ms. Xiao, and the company operates as a shareholder model. Uh, how holes contribute with shares with medicinal plants and receive a percentage back. From this idea of Ms. Xiao, up to now, Taping has got nearly 10 hectares of valuable medicinal plants. So Ms. Xiao Sumei is going to tell us about the traditional medicines of the Red Dao people. Ms. Xiao, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. I believe that medicinal plants... Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I believe that medicinal plants are a family matter for you. You have discovered 34 herbal medicines and developed many effective traditional knowledge-based remedies. But this is something that your parents used to do as well. Could you tell us a little bit more about the traditional medicine of the Red Dao people and how it has been preserved until now, please? So um, um, my name is Chao Su Mei. Um, I've been born and grew up in Tafin village. And my first time to uh, know about the herbal medicine is when I was about um, five years old. Um, this is uh, we learned from our parents. So it continues about 10 to 15 years old. That is we learn about few uh, plants from use for the uh, herbal bath. Yeah. So this herbal medicine is been uh, telling by our parents. Um, when we both work on the fields, our parents uh, thought that is like one of the uh, plants is very important for the families to use to um, uh, for uh, help for the pains for the headache and for the stomach cake so that is we start how we learn uh, to know about different plants <laughs> So 
So first time uh, I've been collecting the, me uh, the medicine plants with my mom. That is when I was uh, 18 years old. Um, my younger sister is been uh, uh, been born. Uh, uh, my younger sister is she. She's um, she. She's uh, been born by my mom, and that is my first time I've been collect the medicines helped for my mom. You after she's have a little baby. <coughs> Then continue when I was about uh, 30 years old. That is the time I learned how to uh, use more kind different plants. So I can I knew about the plants for effect for the summer cake for the uh, women's when is get very ill. So that is um, I collect all the plants and then uh, uh, to you for the family is first. <laughs> So in the path in in our village is uh, no hospital, no clinic. So um, who is feel like sick, ill? So they all come to to asking to look for my parents, and that is the times uh, I learn more about the the uh, spirit and how to uh, collect different kind of plants together. And I feel so lucky is because um, my parents and my parents-in-law, they all have very good knowledge about the medicine plants. And totally is we have about 120 different kind of plants, but um, uh, normally we use about 18 to 22 plants. That is to um, uh, use for, uh, for the bath and for treatments. <laughs> After that, I think in the uh, herbal medicine is one of the uh, traditional, is very important for the families. We need to uh, learn very be carefully and to spread to our children. So um, uh, that is my idea. Then when is tourists coming uh, to Tafin village? This is one of the traditional we thinking to introduce to tourists. <laughs> So uh, around in my place where I live, this is about um, uh, over 10 families. They also have very good knowledge about the medicine plants, but uh, some is the U for different effects. So uh, um, example, my neighbor, that she's uh, knew very good about the medicine plants, but she's need how to, um, how she, 
she she's need to know how to use it. So this is we also share experience in the community. เอ่อเบื่อเยอะกว่าเว้ยเบื่อเก็ดเดียเบื่อเก็ดอีเตียนติเตียนอินเดียตุยดานายฮะเอ่อเบื่อเดียยะลาหลอกเจ้าฝาก
um, they get paid every time when they bring the products to here. But um, in the end of the year, this is we have uh, shared the benefit for whole, for whole companies member. And um, until today, so we have about 120 member in this station. We get shares the benefit every year, the end of the years. Uh, this member we get shares from uh, two million dong to fifteen million dongs in the end of the year. This is the benefit for whole whole years. Wow! So the collaboration and the support from the university was very important for you, no? Because the product. You, you were not making benefits and with the support, with this alliance with the university, you, know, you managed to have a better product. How, and you were making reference to that you, your, the, the families involved collect all the plants, right? How do you ensure that biodiversity, that nature is not affected in a negative way? when they collect all these plants? Um, so in the families, this is um, uh, the girl or the boys when we learn how to uh, how to how, how to use the uh, the medical plants. Uh, this is teaching by our parents. They need they need to show us which plan is you for. So for example, the, the medical herb you for the uh, herbal bath, this is we have 18 different plants. So, so we all have, um, we all have to know the, the, the name and the different plants. And um, uh, who in the family, so uh, we will have, um, it depends like if, um, um, we will have two people is, is collect the medical plants from the forest every month or every week. So after we collect it, we need to bring it to the Sapana Pros Company station. <laughs> So for example, for example, the, the plans for the women after have new babies, this is we will have 12 different plans, um, mm -hmm. 12 different plans for the bath and uh, 18 different plans for, for, for the drinkings. So this is, we all have to um, uh, know about the, the plan and the name of the plants. And how these arrangements promoted by you and the Sa Napro, Sapa Napro Company change the life, livelihood of the community? Can you tell us some examples of the improvements that you can see at the community level made by your company and your products? Could you so, hear my uh, question? Yeah. Can you speak louder? 
Yes, I was asking about changes, improvements in the community, how this company and how the development of these products have improved the community. What examples can you provide us of improvements for the community? So uh, this these uh, 120 families members uh, work together in these communities. Um, they get shares by the benefit in the end of the years, and um, they take turn every day. Each different families they bring the uh, medical plans to sell to the companies. They get paid by that way. And another way, this is we have um, um, we have support by the in in example like our place here. We check who is. Uh, is belong to the poor families, they will get joy first. And after that is we will, um, we will uh, able to join a different families, but those member they join here, um, they also have um, every day here, we have uh, 12 uh, works member here that will get paid every month. And um, every month they get paid from two million dong to five million dongs. So that is uh, is another way support by the companies. And um, the more important that is they get share the benefit in the end of the years. Um, this this support by uh, company. This is the use to provide the uh, food. The use to provide the. Uh, the new year stuff like they buy the clothes they buy the winter clothes they buy the winter time food and uh, and also they get learn how to protect the medical herb um, when mm -hmm. they collect it because if not then they will cut all the the herb they don't know how to protect this so when they join together in these communities they will get a meeting one or two two times a month. So this is tell them uh, how to protect the forest, how to protect the medical herb. And another way support by uh, Sapana Pro Company that is we also uh, uh, shares the benefit to the schools, to the community to build the school, to build the, the road is better. That is, mm -hmm. uh, I'm feel um, so happy about these companies. Excellent. And my final question, uh, Ms. Michelle Sumai. Um, in recent years, there is an ABS project funded by the Global Environment Facility uh, through UNDP has selected the tapping area as a pilot site, right? Uh, could you tell us how the project is supporting the local community so far? Uh, 
So um, this IBF project support by our uh, Tafin village. First is um, developing companies uh, to protect the forest in Tafin village. So we have about um, 65 different hectares forests. And this is all belong to Tafin village. <clears throat> So, so this this is um, hundred percent. This is uh, protected by our um, members of the this company, Sapanapo companies. Am I Am I And the second one is um, is the. Um, this is this those family they uh, belong to this pro, uh, this uh, 65 hectare forest they all have uh, learned how to collect the medical herb uh, to protect it and to replant it and um, um, and they also get get learns how to um, um, we you in the communities. And also uh, we, so we also develop the communities protocols uh, for the whole community of Tafis. And we have uh, we get another support that is uh, to um, regrow the um, to regrow the uh, different medical herb is very important for you in the community. And also uh, develop for um, application of certificate made by the Red Zao Herbal Medicines. Mm -hmm. So um, the Red Zao Herbal Medicine used for the herbal bath. Because in Vietnam is uh, being used everywhere. And we very worry that it can be mixed, mm -hmm. mixing usings. So this is we also get support to uh, uh, get to make the certification uh, mark of the red zar herbal medicines for the herbal bath. Excellent. Congratulations for your experience. Thank you so much for your intervention. I'm going to ask the audience in case there is any immediate question, although I invite everyone to ask and send questions through the Q and A uh, section below. And there may be some questions at the end, but in case we have any uh, immediate question, we could ask now to, um, to Ms. Charles Sumai. Um, Okay, I don't think that is the, the case, um, but please stay with us until the end and uh, because we will have answers and questions 
for Ms. Chao Sumai. I want to thank you also. You are her daughter, right? Also for your effort to yes. interpret her. Um, I know it's early in the morning in, in Vietnam, so thank you so much. And thank you also to our colleagues from UNDP Vietnam, in particular to Mr. Le Andung for his support to make this intervention possible, uh, traveling to your community to facilitate and ensure uh, Ms. Chao Sumei participation. Thank you so much. And I'm Thank sure you. we will have questions. So stay with us, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. After this initial experience from Vietnam, let's uh, move on now to Sabah, to Malaysia. And we have uh, Mr. Gordon Jonga Thomas, sorry, uh, who is a Dusun uh, Tatana born in Sandakan raised in Tenon and currently living in Penampam as the coordinator of natural resource management program of the PACOS uh, Trust. He is responsible for empowering indigenous peoples of uh, Saba on customary stewardship of their natural resources, protection of traditional knowledge and sustainable use and restoration of resources in their customary territories. He has a degree in molecular uh, biotechnology at the University of Malaysia, Sabah. Um, he joined uh, PACOS Trust in 2009 as a volunteer in the uh, media unit. And Gordon is going to introduce the, the experience of the PACOS uh, Trust in Sabah. Uh, Gordon. Thank you so much for being with us today, and you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, so, again, my name is Gordon, and really nice to meet you all. And today, I will gonna share my experience, especially not only my experience but our experience in Pakos Trust uh, on ABS. So, I'm gonna share my screen now. So, wait for it. Okay, so so I'm just I'm gonna share the experience of uh, of ABS or access benefit sharing in the perspective of indigenous people in Sabah. So, uh, but first I'm just gonna introduce uh, our our organization. So Pakos Trust means Partners of Community Organizing in Sabah. So we are community based um, community based organization, and we are established since 1987. So we are, what we do is we are mainly dedicated to support the IPs in Sabah. We do empowerment, training, and you know, awareness in land, territory, resources, education, including traditional knowledge. So this is our, our vision. Uh, we, we want the IP healthy, sustainable, resilient, and living peacefully uh, with, equipped with the, their knowledge, expertise, in managing their resources in and also an opportunity to support a comfortable life. Yeah. So this is where we work. This is, uh, as you all know, uh, Sabah is in the North Borneo. So it's an island of Borneo. So we have actually, we have three main IT groups. Uh, we have Dusun, Murut, Python, and mostly in Sabah, we are majority uh, IPs. So uh, more than 60% of the IP will live in, I mean, in the population of the total population of Sabah. And mainly we are in the rural area, yeah. And <clears throat> most of us are farmers, hunters, and gatherers. Yeah. So as you all know, and also Sabah have really rich on biodiversity. And if you can see here, we, our, our the IP, I mean, indigenous people here, we are living from uh, various territories, yeah, from the mountain range to the mangrove area. So this is what we call the territory of life. So we are depend on the resources, we depend on the, the our territory, and we depend on our uh, land. Yeah, and yes, uh, I'm pleased to to share uh, some of our language, some uh, language that we will always use in in our in the ground. 
So, uh, gompi guno means like use and care. Uh, so, tagal means uh, it's a it's a it's a customary practices that we use to river uh, in riverine uh, riverine resources. And tagal means actually in the Dusun word means no, but in in customary law. So. Uh, when people were saying like, oh, this place is, has been tagal, these resources has been tagal, then the community know that area has been, uh, has been, um, uh, cannot be disturbed and it will only be used accordingly. Yeah. And also, we also respect the living and the non-living. Um, we, we believe that all, uh, all things have a spirit. And this is what we call, uh, we have like Momokan, Monolob, Mamason. This is our epic. Yeah, we have to do epic, not only for other communities, but also the spirits, the, the resources. So this is very, uh, very important to us. Yeah, and if if there's a wrongdoing, uh, if there's a wrongdoer, a wrongdoing, uh, we we have to do sogit. Sogit means uh, we compensate, uh, compensation. And so it means we have to cool down. Whenever there's a, a wrongdoer, if it, whenever uh, whenever uh, there's a wrongdoer, and it will be you know the, the the it will not balance the area, so we need to cool down to make it equilibrium. Yeah. So this is uh, our uh, indigenous knowledge and customer practices. But yes, and. There's a lot of challenge, yeah, uh, in terms of the bioprospecting and also biopiracy activity, yeah. Um, since the before the the the, the establishment of uh, access benefit sharing uh, or into the legislation, um, there's a lot of issues, yeah. Uh, not only from the researcher, not only from the studies by 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 companies or private, but also um, tourism activities going on, yeah. So some of the tourists, I mean, some of the researchers, they are, they are try to be, you know, they just uh, pretend to be a tourist, but they took some of the um, the resources with, without the knowledge or without the, the consent by the community. And this is, has hugely impact, especially to the community in terms of their losses of the biodiversity, the key species, yeah? And as you all know, Malaysia has been, I mean, they ratified the CBDs uh, in 1994, but only after only in 2000 we we have uh, uh, the the bills of the of the ABS has been approved so so this is one of the cases uh, I can share it's a Dusun community uh, it, they are they are living in, around the there's a, there's a biosphere park uh, we call it the Croker Ranch area it's a Croker Ranch park and there's a researcher there he he pretend like you know oh I want to do uh, research on your area but actually he collect some of the species like insects the key insects uh, and they sell it as, uh, for souvenirs you know they're selling for the souvenirs and the community didn't aware about this they didn't know and they didn't know idea how to deal with it uh, even though because most of their traditional knowledge it's orary it's it's in oral and the researcher is a foreigner and he didn't even respect the, the respect by the community. Yeah. So there's a dispute, this, the dispute, the, com the diversity and also the spiritual of the community. They feel that the area has been disturbed, then they need to be balanced. Yeah. Like what I was saying before, they need to be soggy. Yeah. Okay. So what happened um, they were there in that time, in the, during the 90s? So there's a formation of working group. Yeah. Uh, it, it's consisting of the community leaders, IT organization like us, PACOS, and several agencies like uh, even from the government. Yeah, we are sitting, we sit together and, and try to formulate how to deal with this matter. Yeah, and and from the the international framework like from the CBDs, the uh, IT target Pro, uh, Nagoya protocol, uh, we 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 use that framework to be as our reference. And at the same time, we, we do some, we do a lot of awareness program, uh, documentation of their traditional knowledge, yeah, in terms of their stewardship and governance of their natural resource. Yeah. So there now uh, before this, their the community, their their knowledge is only through orally, and we try to write it up into a book, 
and and at the same time we also uh, strengthen the community protocol through and uh, uh, through uh, our epic process especially for the researchers so uh, there's there's several points that we that we we highlight or strengthen the the community protocol where first we need the, the researcher or the person who wants to go to enter or to study the area have to to meet the community leader first and also the authorities then the next there must be a community meeting where the com the, the researcher or the person must uh, to do some introduction uh, the objective of the studies or what what he wants to collect or why he wants to collect yeah the benefit to the communities even risk or impact to the community yeah and other other than that we also we, the person or the researcher have to follow the con the follow the condition or any condition by the community such as they have to respect the community's culture and belief other than that we the researcher have or have or must to 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 allow the community to involve and participate their studies yeah and and most important is the agreement there must be a black and white there must be a written letter and a timeline given to the community to understand and to decide uh, either the person or the researcher one and can be entered to their territory or not so this is uh, some of the protocol uh, to strengthen the protocol that we, we 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 assist the community and and also at the same time uh, the establishment of the Sabah BioD enactment in 2000 so there's two article that which is really um, important uh, for the IP uh, especially in in protecting their 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 knowledge their collective belief and also the protection uh, of their resources and land under the, the native customary rights yeah and also uh, through all the lobbying and also the consultation by by the state and also um, by the working group it also uh, assists of uh, assist uh, into and feed in the into the the access benefit resource uh, sharing enactment into the policy national policies yeah yeah so what have we learned yeah so we learn a lot yeah um, especially in documentation and reviving of their 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 knowledge uh, what we can see here most of their knowledge it can be done it can be learned as a conservation model so there's a lot uh, especially in tagal system when when we have like you know um, uh, they have the rules they have the belief and they have to be um, certain uh, certain time limit to only harvesting the area or the, the 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 river or the resource so it's a it's a uh, how to say it's a conservation and it's a sustainable way of uh, using the resources and it has been adapted in 2003 uh, especially in the in the tagal system under the river resource uh, enactment yeah and other than that the community also aware now that uh, the biopiracy is a is a main challenge and it's a main issue and since then they know they will know and they will know the process if there's someone coming to their village or their territory in in doing uh, research or any studies or collecting uh, resources they will know the process what should we so what should do uh, but this is the thing at the biodiversity enactment 2000 even though it's already been passed in the Sabah legislative law but it has not been fully implemented yet so the community protocol is the frontliner at the moment the community is the frontliner um, to protect the biodiversity to protect uh, the uh, from any encroachment or researcher or personnel whenever to do or dealing with you know collecting or studies yeah so i i, I feel here that the community has a lot of uh, have a huge role 
in terms of protecting the area. Yeah. And yes, so I think this is some of the recommendations in support of the community rights. So now in PACOS, uh, in my program, we continue, you know, support them to revise back their traditional knowledge, the customary rights in terms of uh, in terms of uh, custodian governance, inclusive governance in their resources and you know the good practices. Um, now in 2020, I think it's since 2019, uh, the the FPIC, uh now the FPIC has been starting to establish, start, starting to strengthening into the jurisdiction system. Before this, they only have like small part in each policies, in each law. But now we try to make as a one uh, entity, so it can be embedded to every uh, policies, and also a full support uh, in terms of the suburb biodiversity. Uh, now it's under, it's still uh, not fully implemented, but we we are really hoping that from from the IP organization and other uh, agency can support this. Um, legislation to be fully implemented. So I think that's all from my part. Thank you. And yeah, Fonsico in our in our language. Terima kasih. Thank you so much, Gordon, for your very concise and very inspiring presentation. One immediate question from the audience. Actually, we have yes. colleagues following us from uh, Mexico, I believe, uh, Guadalupe. Hernandez uh, is uh, following the, the webinar from Mexico and is asking whether she can take a look to the protocol. Is the protocol, the community protocol, publicly available? Um, no, actually it's it's belong to the community. We have several copies. Uh, this is some of the example of the copies. This is where I oh, can see, okay, this is some of the uh, protocols that they are, uh, that they are developed. Uh, this is where, uh, if you can see here, this is where the there's one Tomonua or in the northern part of the community, uh, northern part of Saba, how they manage and how they steward the mangrove uh, area, the mangrove uh, resource area, and this is in the Terian area in near in Penampang. So mm -hmm. this is where how they protect the watershed area. So they have actually. Actually, the community have their own way to develop their protocol, but at the same time, we need also them to 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 aware that we also need to strengthen their protocol in terms of demand. If they has a researchers or any uh, any outsider, uh, I'm, it's very bad to say outsider, but any uh, from uh, from any uh, how to say from any public or any. Uh, of if there's a private or private sector or companies or or researcher coming come to their to their territory. Oh, I totally understand that the the, yes. the, the protocols are their tools, no? So yes, belong correct. to them definitely. But yes. it's a pity that uh, I I think the colleagues in Mexico they are developing <laughs> some community protocols, and yes. of course they would love to see the experience, no, of other sure, communities. Yes on how they have um, a structure and develop yeah. no, these kind of tools. Yeah. Okay. It's a pity. I, I hope you can <laughs> convince them to upload them to the to the um, to the clearinghouse no at the Convention uh -huh. on Biological Diversity, for instance. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And okay, uh, maybe also I, I also want to share that this also the, the community protocol also uh, it been uh, it been endorsed by the native chief. So because we are here, we, we have still have a native law system and we're using the customary law. So it's very helpful for the native uh, the native law or native uh, court uh, jurisdiction. So yes, uh, maybe what I can do is like, uh, maybe we can share some of the experience, maybe in collective way, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, how they, they, how they are developed and how they are starting uh, uh, right up or documentation of their uh, customary law and practices into a book. That would be fantastic, uh, Gordon. Thank so you. definitely yeah. we should use and take advantage of the global avias community and also of yeah. your intervention yeah. to try to do that. Yeah. So we, we take note of that concrete possible collaboration and product. Sure. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gordon. I'm sure there will be lots of questions to, to you. Um, <laughs> so I insist, I invite colleagues attendees to write your questions in the section yeah. of question and answer. And at the end, we will um, pass those questions to the panelists in order to, to answer them, okay? So after this uh, stop at um, Saba in Malaysia, and just thanking again, uh, Gordon for that great uh, presentation. And we need to move to our uh, last stop uh, today. We are traveling farther east into the Pacific and we go to a beautiful country full uh, of uh, beautiful islands. Uh, we are talking to, we are referring to the, to the Cook Islands. And we have the pleasure today of having Dr. Graham Matheson, um, who holds a Master of Biomedical Engineering and is the CEO of this uh, company, uh, Jenny Henry, who is the director of the Cook Island uh, Medical Research and, and Development Limited Company. And we have the privilege and honor of having Mr. Terea Matayapo, Mata Paul Orsworth, who is the president of the Kutunui of the Cook Islands. Um, they are going to make us a presentation about Tetika skin care and Tivati experiences. Um, as I was indicating before, please do not forget to write your questions as after this presentation, we are going to move into the final section of questions and, ac and answers. And um, the speakers uh, in this case have um, requested me to make a short introduction. Uh, is that correct, uh, yes. Graham? Yes, so, please. I will make a, a short introduction. Um, COVID-19 outbreak has impacted the world in so many ways. Perhaps one of the most significant impacts is a re-evaluation of the entire approach to health, economics, and social well-being. Perhaps for the, for the first time in several decades, the established mantra of more money, more staff, and more efficiency are being challenged by the possibility that more health, more community, and more resilience are preferable. This global catastrophe brings the spotlight onto indigenous communities around the world for both reasons of concern, with these communities likely to feel the worst of the health impacts should the pandemic spread and abate it. And for reasons of hope, with the traditions of sustainable, resilient, community-focused approach that prioritize oneness of the people with their environment and their unique means of working with their environment to provide health, sustainability, and well-being. The Cook Islands is a small island state in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean, and they have a rich history of traditional knowledge including medicinal plants that were integral to the lives of their ancestors. The custodians of biodiversity in the Cook Islands, the Kutunui, entered into an Ogoya Protocol compliant ABS agreement with Dr. Graham Matheson to develop traditional medicine for treating injuries years before the Nagoya Protocol was proposed or ratified. This project has resulted in international patents, recognition and support from the UN and affiliated agencies, improve awareness and pride in their cultural and natural heritage, and has led to the implementation of changes to the regulatory environment, to ABS agreements, and use of traditional medicines within and from the Cook Islands with two products being brought to market, Tetika and Tivati, that maximize the benefits to the Cook Islands. 
Terea Matapayo Paul Allsworth, president of the Cotonui of the Cook Islands. Please, can you explain us how the Kutunui became the custodians of biodiversity in the Cook Islands? Your Honor, Paul, are you on? Sorry, we seem to have a little bit of uh, audio difficulty with Paul catching on. Yes, yes, now, I'm on. Now, there excellent. There you go, Paul. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much. The, as custodians of diversity in the Cook Islands, the Ko Um Do you want me to read to read the paragraph, uh, Dr. Graham? Uh, yes, and uh, and you can elaborate as you go. I'll, I'll put up uh, an image rather than the, the words. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let me just um, briefly explain. The, the Ko Chunui is the uh, sub chiefs of uh, of the of the Cook Islands. We have our paramount chiefs, the Uyariki, and there's 17 or 18 of them. And underneath the paramount chiefs is the Kootenui. Uh, and this comprises of uh, Mataiapo, Rangatira, and Kavanas of the Cook Islands. And there's over 500 uh, throughout the Cook Islands. And I, and I think the, um, this is a real good story because uh, the Kootenui has been working very closely with Matheson Enterprises, uh, but it goes back before my time. Uh, two presidents before my time supported uh, the cause and the project for the Titika and lately the, uh, the Ati uh, project. So um, as a group of traditional leaders, we fully endorse and support uh, the work of uh, traditional medicine uh, as it imparts into um, intellectual property and to commercialization, uh, so to speak, but the, at the same time, uh, protecting our natural resources. Uh, so that's the brief summary, uh, Dr. Graham. Yep. Thank you very much, Paul. The, I, I wanted to highlight an additional uh, achievement of the, the Kotunui, which was their uh, establishment of the Rawi, um, which is a traditional conservation method that was uh, adopted uh, in the 1980s and 90s. And uh, just uh, a few years ago, um, Paul was involved personally in um, cooperating with the Cook Islands government to establish what is now the world's largest protected area, the Marae Moana, which is almost 2 million square kilometers uh, of protected area, which is uh, considered by the Kotunui as an extension of the Rawi, um, uh, one of the traditional uh, custodial practices. So I just wanted to use this opportunity to, uh, to highlight their achievements in that area as well. Um, it's a, an enormous part of the ocean that is being protected for future generations from excess exploitation. And I'd like to hand over to Jenny Henry. Uh, we'll explain a bit about how we got to where we are with our traditional knowledge. Thank you, Graham. Terea Mataiapo, kia orana all. Greetings to everybody in the webinar today. I'm delighted to join you. I'm Jenny Henry. I'm the Managing Director of Cook Islands Medical Research and Development. And more especially, I am Dr. Graham Matheson's younger sister. Um, I'm delighted to tell you about where we started and um, our actual journey for Titika and Tevati started on board a traditional voyaging vaka um, sailing across our South Pacific and to tell you the story we really need to reflect on the Cook Islands as a warrior race um, of the Pacific. 
Um, we Cook Islands Māori, like all Polynesians, are descended from a warrior race of navigators, one that navigated the Moana Nui or Kiva, the Pacific Ocean, and the prized possession of our people um, really was the strength and bravery of our toa or the knowledge of our taonga, which um, in modern day is called uh, our doctor. Um, and as Ms. Chow Su May referred to, was the knowledge passed on from her parents in understanding the, the plants which they gathered. Uh, the mana and leadership of our ariki, which is our um, top leaders of our country and the cohesion of the community under which the Matayapo and the Kultu um, agreed to, um, was also our natural world and, and how uh, our natural world provided the stars, the currents, the plants, the land and our ancestors developed solutions uh, to our existential threats. Um, this knowledge was passed on for generations and has survived despite the devastating impacts of disease and colonial rule on the population and traditions of the people. Our traditional methods of treating bone and soft tissue injuries, um, which aided our traditional warriors back in that time. Um, this still lives on and this is the beginning of our journey. And um, it started when I was on board the a traditional voyaging vaka with the late Titika Matayopo. Initially, she was skeptical about our ideas, um, but in, uh, she was an active member, of course, of the World Indigenous Persons Organization. And so she was of the position that no Indigenous people had a positive outcome from sharing their traditional knowledge, um, as some of you have alluded to. Um, but we both embarked on that journey. We um, sailed on the vaka and as her cabin mate in fact and we we bed hopped I would um, do the night shift while she would do the day shift and um, it was through that journey that she really was convinced that our ancestors were scientists they didn't randomly float across the Pacific hoping to hit an island um, so they also didn't randomly throw a few plants together hoping to mend a bone um, she she realized from that journey that if we if we held the secrets to improving the health of people as beneficiaries of knowledge and technology from other cultures we too also had an obligation to investigate and develop our knowledge so we could contribute to to the health and well-being of others um, that she did really hold that fast and held it true um, and and back then, our ability to navigate the oceans um, and recover from injury and the need to live sustainably on our small island homes was fundamental to the survival and success of our people. It truly was, um, and that's how we uh, were able to go from island to island. And there truly was a science behind the traditional methodology that was employed in our people. And, um, Really, my experience with Titika was um, right at the outset. And she, Graham had asked her for permission. And after on that Vaka voyage together, where we both realized that our ancestors were in fact scientists, um, she really truly believed that the Cook Islands had something really truly wonderful to share with the world um, and sharing our health benefits and um, knowledge, but also keeping it under wraps um, in regards to this combinations thereof um, was how we started. Thank you Jenny uh, and that is that is how the story started and I was at medical school I was a uh, rugby player I represented the Cook Islands at uh, rugby and w that comes with a lot of injuries um, myself included with multiple fractures and other teammates of mine in the national team had uh, devastating fracture injuries that recovered remarkably when they had returned home to the Cook Islands to get their traditional treatment of the Vairakawatsi. And I had the fortune of having a wonderful mentor, um, Professor Bill Walsh at the University of New South Wales, who I did a research project on fracture healing with when I was at medical school. Then when I was a junior doctor, I did a master's of biomedical engineering with Bill. And so I was in a unique position to investigate the Tairakawatsi because I was a medical doctor, I had a biomedical engineering background, and I had access to one of the world's premier research laboratories and a very supportive uh, director of that laboratory, Bill Walsh. And so I went to the Kotanui with um, Tatika Matayapo, and we had a very long 
series of discussions. Uh, we've fully laid out the implications, the obligations, the risks, the benefits. Uh, they sought legal advice. We got support from the Cook Island government and we managed to get unanimous support from the Kultanui at the General Assembly, which I do believe was the first unanimous vote they've had in their history. Uh, and we proceeded to investigate it. The uh, Kotanui later reenacted the handing over of the traditional medicine to me on a, um, at the launch of our first product, which was attended by the Arongamana, the Paramount Chiefs and the, President of, and the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands. And we took the traditional medicines, uh, which we did, as Jenny said, we kept it secret. The universities did not know the recipes that they were testing. Um, and this was very important for us as it would become apparent later on when it came to maintaining control of the intellectual property. And we studied this under multiple um, projects at the University of New South Wales. And we discovered that our traditional remedies for healing um, most certainly just created an impact. We could generate improved cartilage and bone formation and fractures. And we also found that the top layer of skin where it was applied uh, regenerated the epidermis in a manner that we could not quite explain either. This then led on to uh, a number of other investigations and we could demonstrate improvement to wound healing. And there was actually, we went a long way down that path and optimized the plant extracts that could regenerate the top layer of skin only to find that it now no longer regenerated bone. So we had to find a, pro a plant kicked out of the program for failing to regenerate skin and found that that was the essential component in regenerating the bones. We could get new bone to grow in a critical defect in one week, uh, which we don't have a precedent for. We managed to improve uh, spinal fusions. We managed to improve uh, bone drilling and to, uh, into the knee joints. So we then developed a company, we raised some money and we managed to patent three separate patents internationally, uh, which recognized the, the novelty and the, uh, the originality of what we have done. The Kotsunui have been shareholders from the start and they are structured to benefit in a, a large number of ways. And I'll get to the detail of that a little bit later. Um, but we went through a very rigorous preclinical study program and came out entirely convinced that our traditional knowledge on fracture healing and soft tissue injuries had a very strong biological basis. We have patents around the world. This is, a, this is an interesting challenge for Indigenous communities. We have spent more than half a million US dollars on patents, um, which most communities would probably struggle to do, and I would certainly um, if there was a methodology of maintaining your intellectual property without this highly expensive exercise, um, that would be preferable. We are, but we have managed to protect ourselves in um, maintaining and owning our intellectual property under the current in, uh, intellectual property rules. We were recognized by the UN in their biodiversity outlook as um, progress towards the uh, biodiversity goals of 2020. Uh, and following on from this recognition, which we had, which occurred after an independent assessment of the Kotsunui uh, Access and Benefit Sharing Agreement, which found that it was one of the world's best practice. And even though it occurred prior to the Nagoya Protocol, we complied with all of the Nagoya Protocol processes because we did it under the first principles of what was the right thing to do at the time. And the Nagoya Protocol really does reflect what is the right thing to do. And it's not that hard when you do it properly. Uh, we were awarded a grant to the Cook Islands uh, in excess of a million dollars to facilitate a national framework towards ABS and this has resulted in a community engagement which Jenny will share with you a little bit later, but it has also resulted in a technology transfer to the Cook Islands. We have extraction equipment, we have analytical equipment, we have the ability to do low pressure, negative pressure solvent, solvent recovery. And we have a gas chromatography mass spectrometer, which is arguably the most advanced machine in the Pacific that is sitting in our laboratory for the use in this project. So we have decided to move all of the production and uh, value add to the Cook Islands. The plants are grown in the Cook Islands. They are harvested fresh, they're extracted, they're refined, they're standardized. And so we produce all of the active material to the final product uh, within the Cook Islands. And our intention all along was to improve the scientific and technical capacity of the Cook Islands whilst proving uh, the efficacy of our traditional medicines. 
Tatika Skincare was our first product, which was a byproduct of the effect on skin regeneration. Um, and this was launched in 2012 uh, and was actually presented to the Queen as a gift from the Cook Islands for her Jubilee celebrations. Uh, we, we are very, very proud of what we've done in the Cook Islands. The, the Cook Island people are a proud race. Uh, we are proud of our history. For a little too long, our history was not considered uh, valuable for the modern world in the future. Um, and there was no framework within the Cook Islands that would have allowed us to develop or to study or to use our traditional medicines prior to embarking on this. Um, as a result of this project and the UN's assistance and the affiliated bodies that have helped us, uh, we have now increased the esteem of uh, our traditional heritage. We have increased its obvious utility in the modern world. Uh, and just recently, the Cook Islands has decided to officially reincorporate traditional medicines back into its modern healthcare system. And as a part of that, we are providing Tavatsi, which is Tavairako Ati, uh, regenerating bones uh, available to Cook Islanders in the Cook Islands. And we will provide it for free because we are custodians of our traditions. We don't own it as apart from our people. And Tavatsi will become available to the rest of the world in accordance with the vision of Tatika Matayapo that our traditional knowledge help the rest of the world. Um, and that will be coming available very soon. I'd like to hand over to Jenny, who will share her screen, um, and she will tell a little bit more about how the community engagement occurred and a bit of a uh, introduction to how our traditional views of uh, this can be shared in a different manner. Thank you, Graham. Um, yes, I'm just bear with me as I share my screen, and I hope that the um, the videos come up all right, so bear with me. Uh, let's see, this comes up. Graham, I've got two videos. We'll just check which way you want me to start. Do you want me to start with our awareness videos or starting with our traditional knowledge? Um, we'll do the dance? awareness first and then the traditional dance, please. Okay, great. Okay, bear with me one sec. Let's just get the other one open. Let's just pause that and bring it back. Thank you for your patience with me all. Okay, just sharing again. Where did it go? Could I okay, suggest, Jenny, that while you prepare, uh, can we just jump uh, into the some questions and answers and leave the videos just to the very, very end? It was a kind of a special closure. Okay. Oh, you don't I've mind. got an additional one. Um, after hearing um, Gordon John Thomas speaking and in regards to their awareness raising around the protocols um, uh, and customary law, uh, we decided that we might just throw in some of the awareness that um, Tereya Mataiapu alluded to um, in regards to our community and awareness sharing um, for the uh, protocol, uh, for our traditional knowledge. Um, if, if that suits, um, that's fine. But yes, any questions and answers, I'll get my screen ready and you guys go ahead and ask away. That's perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny. Um, yes, I, I had one question. Uh, the audience, we had a question to... Um, yes, one second. Yes, to Ms. Chao Sumai. Um, our colleagues, yes, are with us. One question. Did you have problems with other communities or foreigners trying to steal your plants? Yeah. 
lấy cắp từ rừng hay là ý là lấy cắp từ rừng hay là ý là từ rừng hay là từ rừng đúng không? Bốn mà miền niệm rồi, mà miền niệm gì rồi? Mà nhẹ quá. Mà mà nhu mà nhẫn của vừa vừa yên vừa vừa quạt để vừa mềm kệ để vừa vừa để vừa để vừa để vừa cái gì nữa kệ vừa yên con vừa thương yes so uh, before the forest is um is freeze we haven't uh, divide by the family so that is we get still a lot from people outside village or from um another group of the community like among peoples but uh, now is um Uh, we get support by the local governments. They devise the um, forest for different uh, each different families. Mm -hmm. So from there, is um, we only uh, collect the medical plant from our uh, forest. We are not allowed to collect by uh, uh, other families. Mm -hmm. And now is another problem still the medical plants that is from the um, black Hmong people because uh, they don't know how to use the medical herb but um, um, uh, Many of the shop, they, they organize the massage shops, sauna shops, so that they collect all the different medical plants and they order by these Hmong people families. So they will, um, those families, they will steal from our families, our Red Zao families forests. So that is the way we, we also have to protect that too. Thank you so much. Um, there was another question. I think it was for Gordon. Let me check. Um, yes. Yesenia Castellanos is asking to you, Gordon, what were the main limitations uh, present in the approach with indigenous peoples and what things made the protocol construction difficult in itself, in your view? Yes. Okay, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, regarding on the limitation, first, I think the main challenge is time. Well, most of the elders, most of the key holders uh, already passed away. So we really need to urgent in terms of documentation of the traditional knowledge in supporting their, you know, their customary and governance of the natural resource. Second is language barrier. Yeah, even though I'm a Dusun Tatana, but I can't even speak their language. And every, because we have like 69 ethnic and every ethnic have different language. So it's really hard, uh, but uh, we are try to be, you know, try to be, um, um, you know, support and help each other in terms of the community, try to understand what they mean, because some of the language is very deep. And thirdly, I think the most, uh, also sadly to say that the, the, de the degradation of the traditional knowledge uh, where from the assimilation through, you know, from the education system, the politics system, economy system, even religion. So this is also affected their traditional knowledge. So I believe and I feel that we need to, you know, help them to document their traditional knowledge as soon as possible before it disappears. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Very, very clear answer. And, and it is true, yeah? It's very important to, to, to have that in mind. Um, yeah. And now one question to our colleagues in the Cook Islands. Um, Denise Melania La Grossa is asking how long or what was the process of groundwork to engage the communities um, to develop this uh, bone uh, narrow technology to healthcare? The, thank you for the question. The, 
The original consultation process took place over a four month period. The discussions with the Kotsunui uh, president were quite long. We would have spent four to five hours um, discussing in fairly great detail over several evenings. And then we would put together a, a highly detailed written summary of what was discussed so that people were able to reflect back on what was discussed, what was agreed, what the, the major points of, uh, of concern and intention were. Um, and so we made sure that we would not only discuss things in detail, but we provided it in writing because very often after a conversation, people can't remember where it started or where it ended up. We made sure that they had access to legal advice. Uh, we had the fortune of many of our Cook Islanders having studied in law and indigenous law um, and intellectual property law. So they had access to that advice. We then followed it up with specific proposals. Um, and again, they were specifically discussed, um, highlighted, and then represented re in written form for them to review. And then when the executive of the Kotsunui had decided that they thought the idea had merit, they then presented it to the uh, General Assembly of the Kotsunui um, and at their annual general meeting. And then they voted as a group um, and had the opportunity to talk and discuss. And only after that had occurred, did the first project begin. So that took about four months uh, for us to complete that process. Yeah, um, if, if I can just add on to that, uh, Paul Allsworth, Cook Island. Please go ahead, Paul. Yes, um, just some his historical uh, information here. I mean, uh, Vairako Maori or traditional medicine uh, has, has been with the islands uh, for centuries, many centuries, and uh, different plants have different uses, and it can be used internally in the body or externally. Um, and as uh, Dr. Graham alluded to, uh, we have many plants in the Cook Islands and probably throughout Asia too in the world uh, that have medicine, medicinal properties that can cure. Um, so this, uh, this is quite common in the islands. It could start from birth, with uh, some of the babies uh, having problems. Uh, we use, use our traditional plants, um, even out, up to the elderly, um, in terms of, for example, uh, constipation, um, you, you name it, the uh, traditional healers or taungas uh, on each of the respective islands will have different plants and medicines uh, to heal different illnesses. Um, so, um, so what we did in, um, in this project that uh, uh, Dr. Madison put forward, uh, we supported it mainly because uh, Dr. Madison is a Cook Islander. I think if it came from external outside, uh, we would not provide the support uh, for that. So I just want to make that point. Thank you very much. No, and that, that was yep. definitely clear to me at the time. Um, and, and, and it's also a point that I, uh, I have reiterated at many of our ABS conferences and communications that our success was because we designed our ABS project around it being driven by our indigenous peoples rather than by having an external group coming in and us giving our knowledge to them. Uh, and as a result of that, we, we have an inverted view of ABS, which is rather than we give you our intellectual property and you share us the benefits. It has been inverted to, we will obtain access to your scientific technology and capital and we will share the benefits with you. Um, and that way we have retained the project in the Cook Islands. We have retained our uh, extraction processes and refining and we have transferred the technology to the Cook Islands rather than transferring our intellectual property away from the Cook Islands. The, the corporations that run this project are all owned and managed by Cook Islanders. The Kotinui uh, beneficiaries at the front end of providing us with the, act, uh, the plant materials, their shareholders in the companies that own the intellectual property and their shareholders or unit holders in the trusts that are beneficiaries of any of the royalties. So we've made sure it was structured in such a way and the Kotanui and I were very clear that the reason for the support was because it was a Cook Islander doing this, the project. So we're very grateful for that. 
um, cooperation, uh, as as Tera Mataipo said, uh, that was one of, that was probably the biggest feature that brought the support of the community along. And finally, Candy Alvarado has sent a um, very good question that I think it can serve as a final round to our panelists. Um, uh, Candy is asking to each of you. What was the main uh, barrier, the main uh, threat or the main challenge that you perceive making this development? And how did you manage? How did you override this obstacle no? into the process? So Gordon, what was the main obstacle, barrier, challenge that you perceive and how you manage, how you override that, that challenge, that obstacle. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yeah, uh, regarding for the, the, the challenge that I was mentioned before. So what we did is like, you know, we really want to uh, aware the community that why the TK or traditional knowledge or indigenous knowledge is important, not only about, not only about their social life, not only about education system, but also how to embed it every, I mean, how to embed it every aspect, every aspect of their life, their political, uh, education, uh, economy, politics, uh, uh, social politics and, you know, conservation into a traditional knowledge. So this is also really important. So I think the most important is awareness and also the capacity building on because we are not we are not the one who write for them but they are the one who write their protocols or write their traditional knowledge and we only facilitate support them and you know and also advise them how to write how to you know how to uh, write in a proper language i mean in a proper language in terms of like uh, uh, policies and also for the outsider message uh, to be much more clearer. Thank you, Gordon. Ms. Chao, Ms. Chao Sumai, what was the main obstacle and how did you overcome that obstacle? So, um, um, first is we don't know how to um, uh, introduce about our herb to all the war. It's been uh, very hard for us to make the marketings to all our guests. And another is um, uh, to, uh, I want to continue to, uh, um, to change thing more about, um, more uh, to the family members to know how to use, to know how to use the medical herb. And, uh, Ekokan, <coughs> Nhanh 
hết đầu tiên này gì cho thầy ơn chỗ thất tài cho hỗn quân diễn diễn hài nhẹ gì cho vừa mặt trí tỏ tài tu diễn hài nhẹ với tài tu khoảng đúng chỗ con ạ đúng chỗ ạ bà chàng cô nghĩ là khó khăn khó khăn để vượt qua một con nhé để vượt qua như thế nào và 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 thế thì em sẽ không cần nói cái đấy nên chủ yếu nếu ở chỗ mấy con thọ như với tự tin là e hằng nói vì tại gì với chỗ kiểu con này gì với tu nhé hay là làm gì với gì với tài tu có nhé ý chủ nhà nè chả mà không ăn là giờ mình với chỗ e e cũng hay nó có nhé bún tu này có nhé cả nhé hạt bơ liền nước này chúng hiếu tụ quả lộng của nam niên gì đi à nghe chẳng hỏi hạn gì hiếu tụ ổ na nhìn nhám chút cổ nè anh nghe chẳng mặc anh cứ còn hỏi nha so um another thing that is we really need to applicate for the uh application for the certificate of the uh medical herb and to introduce to everywhere they know about our products and i'm worried that uh, i'm getting old and older so uh, i really want to share this um, knowledge to uh, my family and my communities so this is also uh, not easiest to uh, for everyone can you know how know how to learn about this you look very young and healthy to me, Miss Chow. So I'm sure you will continue pushing this. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Raham and Paul, your reflections on the main obstacle and how did you overcome that during the the process. Uh, thank you, Alejandro. Uh, the the main the main three obstacles for us was the the intellectual property uh, framework. So um, the filing of patents and the the ownership of intellectual property when you're incorporating the additional data generated by the universities. It was. Uh, it was a challenging um, to to na navigate that landscape, um, and in addition, the the cost of uh, research is very high, and the cost of intellectual property um, patent filings are very high. So the the need to to spend money very often puts the um, at the very least the the perception of control in the hands of the person who has the money. Um, so we had to be very careful and design our structures very defensively, which is not in our intrinsic nature, but that was the way that we got through that. Um, because otherwise you'll be told who owns it is the person who has the money, not the person who has the intellectual property. So that was one challenge. The corporate mindset of uh, people within the biotechnology space was a was a difficulty for us. Their their view of how the world works and how you deal with stakeholders is markedly different to what our community expectations of engagement and interaction is, um, and that was very difficult. Uh, but the main way we overcame this was the fact that we kept the the source of the active material under our control. So at all times, the, the traditional medicines were being harvested, refined and exported um, for research without the end user having the knowledge about where the actual material came from or how to reduplicate it. So by controlling not just the intellectual property, but the actual source of supply, we managed to at least keep our control over that maintaining um, a, a significant position of strength, uh, which would have otherwise been very, very difficult. Uh, but we're very fortunate in the Cook Islands. We have a, a unified community of traditional leaders, which is not commonly found around the world. Um, we, I, I had extremely supportive um, research collaborators uh, in Bill Walsh 
Um, and I was a medical doctor and we were able to finance the early stages of this project in-house. Um, so th that was fortuitous and it's very difficult to replicate. Oh, and my family in the Cook Islands did all the work, um, which also makes it an awful lot easier. You were happy, you were very lucky. You had a lot of people to rely on, no? So that yes. makes a difference, definitely. No, incredible experience and very important, no? And, and how difficult it is to make this uh, bridge, as you pointed out at the beginning, between science no? and, and traditional knowledge and, and how this should be a long-term relationship uh, based on trust. Yeah. And how difficult it is to articulate that, no? Um, so it's, it's challenging and needs to be based on long term. And in a previous webinar, uh, all the colleagues were actually making reference to that point, no? How difficult it is to get a project that can give support in a long term, no? To this kind of process. And, and Gordon, you were making reference uh, to this, no? This need of a, a project or, or a trust like PACOS, no, that is providing this support in a long term, no, basis, which is very difficult and, and quite unique also, no. Uh, and the experience in Vietnam has been also fantastic, no, to see how this community has searched uh, for sustainability, no, within their own products, no, and their own uh, traditional knowledge, their own uh, traditional practices um, to connect with the tourism and other activities and making a sustainable uh, um, business, no? which is again uh, very difficult. Incredible experience. Thank you so much. I was uh, overwhelmed by, by the richness of, of the debate, of the uh, exchange uh, today. And as I mentioned before, the, the community of practice is open the Global Avias community to continue this exchange. So I just invite all the participants and all the panelists to join the community. Just as my final remark, uh, invite you to participate in the final webinar, uh, which will take place on Friday, uh, August uh, 7th, will be uh, 7 uh, a.m. Panama time, which will mean 7 p.m. Uh, Bangkok uh, time. Um, and we will have a more open panel rather than presentations. We will have um, a panel with representatives of indigenous uh, peoples from all around the world on their views and aspirations regarding this uh, post-2020 global biodiversity framework. So I hope you can also join us uh, during that uh, dialogue, that debate. And now, Apologies, Jenny, because I put you on hold for a long time, but as a final present gift coming from the Cook Islands, we have a couple of videos as a conclusion for today's webinar. So thank you very much, Jenny, for your patience, and please no proceed with the, with the video. Okay. Um, so we initially just was going to just have um, the one video and um, after listening to to the presentations we, we're going to go ahead with um, just sharing two just tell me if you can see this I think Jenny that you have to share your screen selecting the option of the audio sorry new say that again when you share your screen you can select the option of the of the audio of the video okay bear with me guys uh new share this one yes your computer sound. How's yes. that? Itanga ngan to tato its tanga ta iteo me natura iruto ito rato ora anga no teta ito ato rua. 
narato iti piriang e rau te tuato i ano mai e to rato kita karape no runga te tu mero i rato te o mea natura e to rato o akakoronga o te e kita tupuna e mea mara ma popinga te rira no te akakita anga te popinga o te rira rito tumu te kariro e popinga mata kita tanga te kato to e rato te ni yao e kita popinga roa ste kita rong kim popinga kira to te o mea e rato te o ra natura me kore te waronga ka popinga te rito tumu te kariro te e kite e rataki e rato kite o rako te manu e te o manu manu riki riki te kite na takere e to rato popinga me kare te e kite kare te yao katsiri e manga nui e tanga nga e ne te e ra e kite na e mai no te anga ang kim kime marama e te o paka o kim popinga just to share some of the uh, um, um, awareness raising that was done with through videos in our own language. And as a finale, uh, we're sharing with you now, because um, in the Cook Islands culture, and like many, uh, we pass on our traditions orally, and especially in the Cook Islands, that oralness is through dance. And this is a uh, Cook Islands dance depiction of um, of the Vairaka Ati, the bone uh, regeneration uh, medicine, the Vairaka Ati, and the Taunga referred to is our um, is the one who's responsible for getting the plants. Uh, the words that describe the dance are at the beginning. If you can read the words and then watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Uh, there you have it. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, wonderful, wonderful that you have also uh, translate this into your expressions and local uh, expressions, cultural expressions, folklore, uh, to transmit no? the idea of, of these uh, products and how they, they work, no? um, which is also extremely important. No? Um, um, before Gordon was talking about the language barrier, but it's not only the language many times, but how you communicate or how they communicate no, at the local level. So uh, it was it was very nice to see this uh, dancing. And I was laughing most of the time because I was uh, in November in Samoa and I had to dance there. Um, and I had to quit. I had to send an official letter to UN uh, Secretary General uh, because I embarrassed the, the entire United Nations system. So I have to quit. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, thank you in particular to our colleagues in Vietnam. They are participating in a very remote area. Uh, thank you to our colleague, uh, Leon Dung, for your support. Uh, Graham, uh, Jenny, uh, also Paul Oldsworth was, was there. I don't know if he's still connected. Uh, Gordon, thank you so much for this. Let me thank also the interpreter, thank you, and the entire team of the Global Ideas uh, Project for your support uh, with all the preparation and all the logistics of the, of the webinar. Um, let's keep pushing. Uh, this is a long-term thing, and I like what Graham said before, no? At the end, the Nagoya Protocol, these kind of instruments, they make look very complex. But at the end of the day, they are very simple. It's just to make the right thing. Um, so let's keep pushing. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your experiences. And let's hope that we can continue working together on these matters. Thank you very much to all of you. <laughs>